I had begin to, begun to read Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writings a lot, Puriyat, etc., and I really liked it because of the poetry and the, the imagery. It was very flowery, very, talk about compassionate, compassionate. And in my heart, I liked Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writings the best. I liked Prabhupada the best, but Prabhupada had a formal side to me and a uh, public persona. When he was lecturing, he was apparently more stern. Not always. Uh, as far as the writing, it's very nice, but uh, sometimes I found it to be sometimes repetitious. So in my heart, and I'm not reading this as blasphemy, I'm just being honest as a person. I like uh, Bhaktivedanta Thakur's writings the most. So I lied on the walk. I said I like Bhaktivedanta Thakur. Uh, Bhaktivedanta Thakur is my second favorite author. Prabhupada looks over and he says, second? Again, at least I, th I read that he read my mind. So I said, actually, he's my favorite. He said, yes. He said, if I was one-tenth the, and he sobbed, and I don't know the word, if I was one-tenth the of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I would be a great devotee. Yeah, you see, all, all these different things, uh, the different uh, aspects of the movement, Prabhupada didn't specifically, you know, order them, but he he kind of uh, he he guided us, but we had to find them out for ourselves, and uh, it had to come from our enthusiasm and our realizations. He never made any demands. I mean, even everything, you know, to begin with, like even initiations, he didn't say, all right, now I'm going to initiate you. No, we had to come to Prabhupada and ask, would you initiate us? You know? He never said, now you, you wash my clothes. We had to come to Prabhupada, can I wash your clothes? So uh, that's, that's the way it was done. Uh, you know, can I can I learn how to cook uh, prasadam? You know, to make dal and like that. So uh, even like the the Hari Nam, uh, we would uh, always. Uh, I mean, even when when Prabhupada was there, Prabhupada led every kirtan. He would play the drum. He would say the prayers. He would lead the kirtan. And nobody even dreamed of singing the kirtan himself. It was, Prabhupada did it. The Swami did it. You see? So when, then when Prabhupada left to go to India, to Vrindavan after his stroke, so there, then we had to do ourselves. As a matter of fact, when Prabhupada left to go to San Francisco, uh, he, he, he left you know, to go and do the mantra rock dance, Mukunda arranged and um, uh, in New York, you know, all of a sudden, who's going to give the lecture? Prabhupada gave every lecture. Who's going to who's going to play the drum? And I mean, we were just standing around, not knowing what to do. All right, uh, why don't you try? Okay, and you know, like this, and okay, I'll give the you know, some Ray said he'll give the lecture, and this that. And, so we just started doing for and then I wrote a letter to Prabhupada that, you know, we don't know, you know, we miss you. And, uh, and anyway, Prabhupada wrote back, oh, it's very nice that you are missing me. And if you like, he said, you can put a, my photograph on my sitting place. So, I mean, in Prabhupada's apartment where he would sit. So we didn't even have a photograph. I mean, nobody had a camera. I mean. We didn't even wear watches, you know, that was, you know, that's where we were coming from. It was things, we didn't want things. 
So uh, <coughs> I had asked devotees in San Francisco to take a photograph of Prabhupada and send it to us. And then we had it blown up and framed and when we put it at Prabhupada's desk. So um, with the street chanting, uh, Prabhupada would go on Sundays, he would take us to the park and uh, we would carry the, the rug and Prabhupada would sit under a tree and have the kirtan. But it was Prabhupada having the kirtan. Nobody ever thought, well, let's, we'll go ourselves. I mean, because everything was done by Prabhupada. But then when Prabhupada wasn't there, but, uh, of course, we only had the kirtans in the storefront or in the park. And, the, you know, we were, it's hard to believe, but, I mean, we were kind of shy and reluctant to, at the same time, to, I mean, just to do what we were doing at that time was very far out and you know, people didn't know what to think of it and we were feeling self-conscious and so I, I remember one night we were having kirtan in the in the storefront and it was very hot, it was summer in New York and finally it was just too hot to be in there and someone said well let's go outside and uh, so we just went outside and started having kirtan. And uh, immediately, we could, of course, when we had kirtan in the shop, some people would stop by and look in and scratch their head and, you know, walk by and, you know, they thought this was nuts. And then mostly the people who just came in were the, the, the drunks, the Bowery bums. They would kind of lurch in and I would then lurch them back out. And uh, but that was the only interest. I, I mean, only uh, you know, young hippie kids would actually walk in. So uh, we went outside and just to st on the street corner. But I'll never forget that first kirtan. It was outside. Um, I was thinking if we chant loud enough, maybe Prabhupada, he's in India, maybe he'll, he'll hear it. And somehow we'll just call out and connect. So we were, everyone was chanting very enthusiastically, kirtan and playing, we had the tam-tam and playing the drum and uh, then this huge crowd formed. Everyone stopped. And this huge crowd, hundreds of people. And then uh, somebody just, you know, we used to pass around at the end of the kirtan a collection also, in the, but that was in the temple. So someone put the collection ball on the, on the sidewalk and people just started throwing money, pitching money in. And uh, that was the first actual kid. It just happened like that. And then we realized that, hey, this is a way of spreading, also getting support, but also people, then some people were chanting, and uh, we had flyers. They would take flyers. We had no books. So uh, it just happened like that. And then I wrote a letter, a Prabhupada letter, in India, saying how this is what happened. Prabhupada said, oh, very good. You continue this, you know, expand it, and like that, Prabhupada. Prabhupada always guided, but always from behind. You know. Speaking of introduction, the first street samkirtan happened, uh, well, it happened uh, maybe in New York first, but it happened to us on Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. We were, we were told to go to the temple and 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 uh, chant, kirtan, chant on our beats and read whatever we had and to alternate those. So after about three, four hours, myself, Jayananda, Jivananda, and I think Udava, just looked at each other and communicated non-verbally and we went like that and let's, let's take this outside. And so we continued, we chanted in the street. We went around the corner to Willard, Willard Street in the place that I, uh, we first lived there before Prabhupada did and we gave it to him.
And we went to the window and we were chanting and Prabhupada comes to the window and he goes like this. So we go, oh no, he's telling us to go away and so we're going back to the temple. You know, we thought it was a great idea chanting outside. So we're going back, uh, so a pender comes storming out, he runs out, he says, no, no, that's the Indian way of saying, come here, come here. So we went upstairs and Prabhupada said, Krishna has given you the intelligence to chant in the street. Now I want you to do this every day. And so, so uh, Street Sam Kirtan Harinama started as of that day. <laughs>